welcome to Britain, welcome to, to Farrakh, and um, you must be very... How, how did this relationship with, with Clarendon come about? Well, we... Uh, it, it has not been an accident, actually, because uh, we... We... Laos is a member of ASEAN, the Association of Southeast Asian Nations. And last year, in, in September, uh, the Secretary General of ASEAN, Lei Long Ming, came over to London. And we we were host we hosted a function together with Asia House, the uh, uh, executive director of the Asia House, uh, Michael Lawrence, invited many many invest investors, businessmen, our friends. That's where we met. We met uh, Claudia and uh, Chairman Mr. Chris Christopher Scott, and and from now from that uh, moment onward we managed to discuss to, to deepen our understanding and uh, Chris got the opportunity to also to visit Laos to understand better the great opportunities exist over there in Laos as well as and, uh, the way forward to make sure that we can cooperate. And, and what, what can Laos do for Britain? What can Britain do for Laos? Actually we think that uh, we, we have uh, many things to offer to Great Britain because it's going to be uh, what we call mutual beneficial cooperation. Laos, although it's a small country in terms of population, because we are roughly 7 million people, it's about one, one ten of uh, uh, Great Britain. But the size of the land is nearly the same. And Laos is a very stable country, uh, and also many natural resources is located in very strategic location. And also it has a very old culture, tradition, world heritage sites over there. It's one of the most important tourist, world tourist destinations. That is why there are so many opportunities offered to Great Britain for, uh, to investors to go there. At the same time, Laos is an emerging economy. The uh, middle income people are increasing in number. They buy Jaguar, Rolls Royce, and lower from your countries. It's, a, it's amazing how people of Laos like to have a very good quality car. That is why we are, that is only one of the examples that I can give to you. One other area that is very booming now is that uh, the UK has become one of the most popular destinations for children education for young people to, to come to the university. Because the UK, as we read the paper, last year you generated about two billion pounds out of uh, foreigners, foreign students to come over here. Laos is the number of students are increasing. That's why we are looking forward to further deepen, further enhance our cooperation in many areas. Uh, we are looking forward as well to to seeing uh, more British investment t toward Laos. That's why it's a two-way it's a two-way trade actually. Thank you very much, Chris Scott. There's no proud day to bring the Laos delegation across here to, to Canada. Yeah, it's an extremely proud day. Um, it's been about a years of hard work, um, culminated in my visit to the Laos government in January last January where I met various ministers, met the Lao Chamber of Commerce and to discuss what a great country Britain was to do business and what wonderful export you know, opportunities that we can fulfil for them. So we are very proud today and to, to have you know, not only the Lao National Chamber here and business delegation but also His Excellency Ambassador um, to the Lao uh, Ambassador to London. So yes, it's very proud. Did it take a lot of work to, to get the whole delegation over here? Um, yes, it did. A lot of coordination because obviously everyone's very busy. Um, the Laosians are very busy, so to coordinate a suitable time and travel arrangements, and you know, we've also been at BCC yesterday, and there's other things that we've been doing with them and set, setting up for them. So it's been quite difficult, but we're here, and that's the main thing. And what do you hope that they and yourselves get out of today? Well, it's not about ourselves or about me. It's really what British export can benefit from. Um, during my meetings in, in, in Laos, um, great opportunity to push British exports and you know, our, our tremendous good services and expertise. So my hope at the end of today, and why the delegation is here, is to partner with uh, British export firms uh, of all different sectors. So, so the mission statement of Essex Chamber of Commerce is, is thinking globally, and it's today a real 
example of that? Absolutely. Um, as a chamber, we've grown and grown, and we realise now that it's absolutely essential that we open up opportunities for our members and our exporters, and this today is making history, really. It's uh, bringing over a completely new country to the global network, um, working with the Loud Chamber, um, signing a memorandum of understanding, and hopefully um, getting some cross-communication going so as we can start to trade between the two countries, and for Essex it's a first. And you enjoy, although you actually enjoy being down here on site, because you think there's a real vibrancy and a day like today exemplifies that. I mean, um, with the amount of investment that's going into Thurrock, it's um, and you know, with the new London port, DP World London Gateway, now on our doorstep and operating, um, it's essential that we give businesses that opportunity. And, and Essex leading the way with Claridon, our patrons, is absolutely um, fabulous, and it's it's just such a golden opportunity. And um, if we can actually give our members. Um, those opportunities, those projects to start trading with AI. I mean, you know, the government are actually saying to us, export, export, export. And what a great opportunity, a new country. No one's, you know, people have heard of Laos, of course they have, but to actually be an Essex Chambers of Commerce and go forward as a first.